just for a bit of fun, we're going to do this one differently. Uh, so this is curved in, again, multiple orientations, and it's tapering at the bottom. So this is the bench top, but it tapers in underneath. And then this is a cantilevered section, like a bench top, and it also tapers. So we'll start with this part first. And again, as previous, we'll try to create more of a rationalized shape to begin with. Uh, I'm going to use the spline tool in this case because I think a spline would be nice, but I'm going to try to have as few points on the spline as possible. So that's basically it. Uh, I'd like to make that maybe a little bit more curved, maybe make this a little bit less curved. That's, that's probably a bit better, a bit more organic. Let's do it the other way as well. And then we'll finish this off. So it's inconsistent. If we wanted to make it consistent, we could do that as well. Uh, but I guess at the moment, what we're trying to point out is that it is possible. I'll make this a straight line. It's possible to make even if it is unusual and inconsistent. Okay, let's get started. So we've got our shape. Now we're going to use the slab tool to create the bench top to begin with. And I'm probably going to make this quite thin at the moment. So let's just leave this as 50 mil. <coughs> the next thing I need to do is to define the outside edge. And to create this outside edge, I'm going to use my wall tool. With my wall tool, I'm going to use a different technique than what I've done before, just to show you a different way. And we're going to use an angled wall. We're going to make this wall angled. Uh, we'll make it maybe a little bit thinner than previous. Might make this 50 millimeters. And we'll make this on an angle of 70 millimeters. Sorry, 70 degrees. How tall do I want it to be? Mm, 900, maybe 1200. I want to define this at the, the top edge, in this case, top edge of the bench. And this slab, I want to make the top edge as well, 1200. Great. Let's go back to the wall. Now I'm going to magic wand. Let's view that again, see how that's working. Yeah, that's mostly where we want to go. The problem that we have is the angle is starting to go out slightly, but that's all right. Let's get these walls and intersect them. And we'll group them all together now. The tighter the curve, the, the harder this becomes to do, the, the less accurate it is. Hopefully that's making sense. We want to get rid of the extra splines now. And we want the slab to be brought forward. And I'm going to change that to a solid line. slightly extend that back, try to get that to line up. Let's re-intersect these. See how far off we are. Great, it's working pretty well. So what's happening? The angle is working quite well of the wall, but the slab edge doesn't quite work. Why is that? It's because it's on the outside of, it's not tapered to the angle. So how do we get this slab to have the same taper? Well, there's a few answers. Partly, we don't need to. So we can offset that now to the inside face. 
not in every direction. It's now starting to look the way we want, but we're just going to need to cut this back because this is extending a little bit too far out of where we want it to be. So how are we going to cut back this edge and how are we going to finish this off? Let's now get a, I'll just extend this so it's lining up there perfectly. Let's get the same wall that we used before, but this time we're going to make its end straight understanding the reference plane. The reference plane is on this side, so we want the reference plane to line up. Has that worked with what we want? It's sort of working in the opposite direction. Let's do that in a different way. Instead, let's do that as a slab. But this time we'll make it 1200 high or 1150 high. in there. We use the solid element operation tool to now cut out the bottom of this design. This is our target. This is our operator and we want to subtract with downwards extrusion. Exactly that. One of the issues that we may have is it's already cutting into it, uh, which is which has to do with the priority. I'm going to need to select this and make this much lower priority. Subtract with downwards extrusion. Execute. Much better. And then we just need to clean up the other side. Let's view all of that in 3D again. So now we just need to trim off this face back on an angle. How am I going to do this? I'm going to follow the same shape that we've got. Similar sort of way, as in the last video, we'll use the cutting plane. Make this bigger than necessary, 1400. 1400. View all of this in 3D. This becomes our 
operator. The wall becomes our target. We want subtraction, execute. And then we want to hide this on the layer called cutting plane. Great. Let's go back and view it all now. It's now representing as we want it. Now the only extra thing we need to add is the cantilevered bench. And I'm going to do this one a little bit differently again. This time I'll use the mesh tool just again for a bit of fun just to show you a different way. I'm going to use this option here which gives us uh, a solid body. I want the minimum solid body to be 50 and I want the base to start at 850. Let's make it a bit shorter. Let's make that 700. Just to find the shape, I'll start with some straight lines and then we'll add some curves to it. I could have magic wanded it, uh, but I'm not a big fan of using the magic wand when we're creating a mesh. The problem that we'll have is that I don't want too many nodes because every node I have I need to define the height of. So with the mesh that just makes life hard. So I'm trying to keep the, this mesh to have as few nodes as possible. That's going to make life a lot easier. With this wall, just in, uh, it's great in 3D, it's just looking a little bit strange in plan. So I'm going to go back and change it to a dash line. Great, well let's have a look at what we've got so far and I'll, then I'll show you how we're going to adjust the mesh. This is sort of sitting where I want it to. In reality, I actually need to be able to push it back into the wall. It's difficult to know where to put it in this view. The best way for me to be able to see that will be to use the section tool. And then I can move this in this way. So move, drag move this until it bashes into what we've got here. This is using the timber, let's change this to the timber as well. Missed it, that one. Change this to one. Great, that's in place now. What do we need to do? We need to add a bit of height. So we want to define we want the edge to be flat, but we want these last two edges to be thicker. So we're going to add in some extra depth. Let's copy this. Copy. Paste, so we're creating a duplicate. I want to lower this down. Six hundred. And the one that's six hundred, I want to now change this to a skirt. Let's view this in 3D, it's just so you're following along with what I'm trying to achieve. And now because everything is leaning and curved, it makes it slightly more complicated. What we're going to do is effectively chop out the top of this, but we'll have to bring this one back in as well. So let's go back to our section again. We need to extend this. How far does it need to be extended? Let's extend it another 20 millimeters. Off 
offset edge are 20. All right, we're getting there. Okay, uh, let's do this in 3D. So the next thing that needs to be done is each of these nodes needs to be brought up to the height of where we want to cut it. So that means going to the Z value and bringing it up to the, the node point here. So how high is that? We know it's 50 millimeters. I'm not going to do this in, in uh, 3D. It makes more sense to do this in plan. I just wanted to explain the process. Again, we have to make sure I got the right one. Yep, this is correct. So then I'm going to click on each of these points. Z 50 millimeters. I don't want to do apply to all. Z 50 millimeters, Z 50 millimeters. Now let's go back. I could make this one less if I wanted to. I could make this one 20. So when we view all of this now, we're seeing it's coming up in height. And by the time we get to the top, that's where we want it to be. Now, it's not currently chopping at all though, is it? So what we need to do is to now lower this down. We need to add more depth. We want to bring that down an additional 50 millimeters. And now we want to chop it. The only issue is it can be hard, if not impossible, to use the mesh to do a downwards extrusion. Let's have a go at that now. And then we'll look at another option. So we're selecting the mesh that is zero thickness, the skirt, solid element operation. Can we use this as our, sorry, one more thing I'll do just to make this a little bit more effective is we'll take the skirt one and we'll offset all edges by 10 millimeters just so we know it's bigger. Solid element operation use this operator, this is our target, and we want subtract with downwards extrusion. Will it cut? No it won't. We can't use this to cut, but what we can do we can take that mesh, design Convert selection to morph. Let's go back into 3D. Ah, uh, hit undo. Select. Show selection in 3D. Now with our morph. Design. Solar operation operator target subtract downwards extrusion. So we can't use the super fleas or the super thin mesh, but we can create it as a morph. And then again, once we've finished, we can turn that into a cutting plane. And then when we go back. We've got it all created. Now to finish this off nicely, what we could do is to select all of these elements, turn them all into morph, and then merge them all together. Uh, we could also use the um, the solid element operation to do a very similar thing. So we could use the wall as our operator. We could use the slab and the mesh as our targets and we just want here subtraction so cutting away the bits that aren't joining very well so then we get edges which are a bit more better to find and now we've got a lovely three-dimensional object and if we want to go back into this and then decide that maybe we want that to be a bit thicker we can do that as well.